What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here and in this video what I'm going to do is go through an example and what I want to show through this example is how the domain and range of a function relates to its inverse. So let's see what we're working with here. We got uh, if f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 3, what is the domain and range for f of x and its inverse? And then how can we restrict the domain for f of x to make the inverse a function? So notice here that we are dealing with a parabola, x squared plus 2x plus 3. And it's a parabola that's in standard form. So the first thing I always like to do personally when I'm dealing with a parabola is find out where the vertex is. And the reason why I want to do that is because graphing it is a lot easier then, and graphing the inverse is easier, and also to figure out what that domain and range is. The domain we know for a parabola is always xer, x can be any real number, but the range depends on where that vertex is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square on this. So it will be x squared plus 2x. What we have to do is take half of 2, which is 1, and then square that. So 2 divided by 2 squared would give us 1. So what we do, we do plus 1, minus 1, and then we have that plus 3 out there. And then if you remember these three terms here, they're always going to be a perfect square trinomial. When we factor that, it's going to be x plus 1 squared. And then negative 1 plus 3 gives us positive 2. So you may have to go back if you're unfamiliar, you don't remember this process of completing the uh, square. And then notice from here, we took this parabola in standard form and we converted it to vertex form. And we could tell what the vertex is. The vertex is um, negative 1 and positive 2. So what we could do now is we can make a table of values for the uh, function. And to make it symmetrical, I'm going to take this vertex, I'm going to put it in the middle. So we've got negative 1 and 2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two x values to the left of negative 1. So that would be 0, or sorry, rather, um, that would be to the right. So to the left would be negative 2 and negative 3. And over here we'd have 0 and 1. So if I plug in negative 2, either here or here, what would I get? I'd have negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1 squared, is positive 1 plus 2. That would give us 3. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 squared, is positive 4 plus 2 gives us 6. If I plug in 0 here, I'd get 3. If I plug in 1 here, I would get 6. So notice how that's symmetrical right there, and you're going to see that soon when we graph it. But before graphing it, what I want to do is actually get the table of values for the inverse. Because we have the table of values for the function, so the inverse table of values is just going to be these interchange. So we're going to have 6, negative 3, 3, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 3, and 0, 6, and 1. And so if we make a graph here, so the y values are going up to 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then the x values here are going up to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so let's graph the function first. So let's start at the vertex. The vertex is negative 1 and uh, 2, so negative 1 and 2, that is over here. Then we got negative 2 and 3, we got 0 and 3, and then we got 6, or no, sorry, 1 and 6, and then negative 3 and 6. So negative 3 and 6, that's up here, 1 and 6, that's up here. So if we graph that, we got that parabola right there. Maybe not necessarily symmetrical or to scale, but nevertheless, that is the parabola. So what if we graph the inverse now? Now, notice that this was the vertex of the function. Well, that means that this is going to be the vertex of the inverse. So it's going to be at 2 and negative 1, which is down here. So it's going to be a sideways parabola. 
And then we got three and zero, three, negative two. So three and zero, that's here, three and negative two. Over here, then we got six and one, and then six and negative three. And so that there is the inverse. And so it's reflected, remember, over that line, y is equal to x. So let's get the domain and range for both of these. So we got the domain of the function. The domain is xer. The x values can be anything. What's the range going to be? Well, the range is going to be y can be anything as long as y is greater than or equal to this y value here, which is 2, which is the y value of the vertex. Okay, I'm going to split these up here. Right, so that's the domain and that's the range for the function. Now, what about the domain and range for the inverse? Well, notice that the domain, all the x values have to be greater than or equal to 2, right? which is the x value of the vertex for that sideways parabola. So we got x cr, x can be anything, but all the x values have to be greater than or equal to 2. And then the range here, notice that the y values can be anything because they go down to negative infinity and then go up to positive infinity. This keeps getting wider and wider as x goes to positive infinity. And so that's the domain and range for the inverse. And notice how the domain and ranges for the function and the inverse relate. So notice that the domain for the function is xer and then the range is yer for the inverse. And then notice that the range for the function is yer but y has to be greater than or equal to 2. And then the domain for the inverse is xcr, x has to be greater than or equal to 2. And you're always going to see that the domain and ranges are like switched, right? So we're switching the x and y values, we're switching the domain and ranges as well. So that's how the domain and range of a function and an inverse relate. So I wanted to show that through an example. Now the second part of this question, they're asking how can we restrict the domain for the function to make the inverse a function. Because notice now the inverse, it's not a function. It's failing that vertical line test, right? There's multiple y values for single x values, and we can't have that. So what can we do? Well, notice that if we could take out maybe half a leg from this sideways parabola, we could turn it into a function then. We could turn the inverse into a function. So notice if we maybe take this leg out, like that, notice now that that inverse, this is still the inverse, would be a function. It would pass that vertical line test then. But since we took that leg out, what did we do? Notice that we have to restrict this range. So y can't be anything anymore because all the y values below negative uh, 1 got taken away. So y can be anything as long as it's greater than or equal to negative 1, which is the y value of that vertex. Okay, does that make sense? So I left all of the y values that are greater than or equal to negative 1, and I took out all of the other y values below negative 1. So I got to restrict the range. And notice that the range of the inverse relates to the domain of the function. And so if I'm restricting the range of the inverse, that means I have to restrict the domain of the function the same way, meaning x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. And if we show that graphically, if x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 over here, that means all of these x values have to go. Right, And then notice that this and this are reflections of each other. And so that's what they mean by how can we restrict the domain for the function to make the inverse a function. So we restricted the domain for this function. All the x values has, have to be greater than or equal to negative 1. And now 
notice that the range then for the inverse is restricted, which now makes the inverse a function. It passes that vertical line test now. We could have also went the other way. So if I redraw these legs here, we could have also took out this leg for the function. So we could have said all the x values have to be less than or equal to negative one. So we keep that, which means that the range for the inverse would be all the y values have to be less than or equal to negative one, which means we would have took out this leg over here and kept all of those y values less than or equal to negative one. So either way works, but that's what they mean when we have to restrict the domain for the function to make the inverse a function, right? So two points I wanted to make, domain and range for a function and an inverse, they're always opposite of each other. And then uh, you can restrict the domain for the function, which will in turn restrict the range for the inverse in order for the inverse to pass that vertical line test in order for it to be a function.